As a storm chaser, I'm often out chasing all sorts of severe weather, most often under epic summer skies as our tornado season ramps up. This year, though, offered up an abundance of a different kind of weather to chase. The 2020-21 winter season, at least for me, was one for the books, bringing in three major storm systems specifically to my area here in West Central Saskatchewan. And I got to chase them all from my hometown of Etonia. For me this year, I didn't have to travel very far to capture these winter storms. In fact, I only had to drive a couple miles outside of town to this co-op card lock where I documented two of the three major storms that came through. This gave me an opportunity to park off of a major roadway, away from traffic and out of danger. And an added bonus, right at the junction of highways 21 and 44. A lot of prep work goes into chasing storms, both in the summer and in the winter. Not only do we spend days poring over forecast models, but there's also the gear that we pack. Uh, so come, I'm gonna show you what I take along for the winter storm. Of course, there's the typical photo and camera gear. I have two DSLRs, a Sony action cam, and a GoPro Hero 9 that come along with me to document these storms. We also have my laptop for pulling up radar, mounts and tripods, battery chargers, and my large tripod, as well as dash mounts to be able to mount the cameras. Aside from the camera gear, I also take along a winter jacket, ski pants, toque, mitts, scarf, and winter boots. We also have a sleeping bag and an emergency blanket and an emergency candle to keep me warm. Lighting, first aid, tow rope, shovel, and booster cables for any issues that might arise while I'm out there. And most importantly, food and water for at least a couple days in case I am stranded for any length of time. And for anybody that follows along with me on chase trips, coffee, which is what I live off of. Winter came roaring in on November 7th in a two-day record-breaking snowfall event that walloped much of central and southern Saskatchewan. It was predicted that the swift current area would be one of the hardest hit. Looking at models though leading up to the event, I saw good potential for my own area. And since I knew some of my friends and fellow chasers were already going to be in the southern part, Rather than traveling, I decided to stay home and document the event right here near Kindersley. I was not disappointed. This area shattered its previous single day snowfall record of 21.3 centimeters or 8.3 inches that it set back in 1974. This system dumped a total of 35.8 centimeters or 14 inches on November 8th. In a single day, more snow fell in the area than all of the 2019 winter season combined. Winter conditions are still persisting in the area. 70k wind gusts have kicked up these massive snow drifts like the one you see behind me here. Uh, so just to give you a little scale, I am five foot two and I'm just gonna go stand next to that snow bank there. It is much taller than me. The residents in the area are going to be digging out from the system much tomorrow. Buses have been cancelled and it is recommended that students stay at home as we clear away a lot of this massive snowfall we've seen in the area. Road conditions continue to be bad uh, with travel not recommended in much of this western part of the province. Snow plows were actually even pulled from the roads because the conditions were just too dangerous for them to be out there. RCMP recommended that only emergency personnel traveled on these highways. Travel is still not recommended in much of the area as these plows start their work on digging us out. As you can see, Saskatchewan isn't always flat. And what do you do with such massive snowfall other than have a little fun? Our second record-breaking system slammed the area on January 13th, 2021. The Alberta Clipper turned Saskatchewan Screamer packed hurricane force winds and upwards of 20 to 30 centimeters of snow in some places. This system brought the Kindersley area to a complete standstill. 
Road conditions quickly deteriorated around 2 p.m. as winds over 100 kilometers an hour rolled in. The Department of Highways closed many highways as the storm tracked across Saskatchewan, starting around the Kindersley area mid-afternoon and all the way to Regina by evening. Stranded motorists lined the highways across the province due to zero visibility and very intense winds. Of course, I couldn't pass up the chance to experience this system in person. So at 10.30 a.m., I loaded up my gear to set up a few miles outside of Etonia at the co-op cart lock. And as you can see, a typical blustery day here. Um, this afternoon, on the other hand, it's really supposed to ramp up. And this area can see 110 km hour wind gusts. Currently, there is warnings across much of Alberta and Saskatchewan. And what we have here is a good old Saskatchewan screamer. We are hitting about a hundred kilometer an hour wind gusts here just south of Kindersley, Saskatchewan, right along the Alberta-Saskatchewan border, as well as ice pellets that are just pelting the side of my head right now. Uh, so it is 1.30 p.m. and uh, this SAS storm is really starting to ramp up. We could see 110 kilometer hour wind gusts here in the next few hours. Of course, what's the point in being out and documenting these events if you don't get out and experience the weather yourself? So if you'd like to see what it's really like in hurricane force winds, this is all you need to know. I'm at the junction of uh, 2144. <laughs> if I get lost. Woo! Around 4.30 p.m., there was a bit of a break in whiteout conditions, and I thought I would try and venture home before darkness fell. Upon reaching the intersection to town, I found a semi had slid into the ditch, blocking all access to town. I maneuvered around the semi to take the back access, only to find that too was blocked by stranded vehicles and very large snow drifts, just as whiteout conditions returned in full force. So I had no choice but to park myself off the road and ride out the rest of the storm in my vehicle. Here to give a quick update from Southwest Saskatchewan. My inbox has been full of people wondering what is happening. So today has brought quite the winter storm, I tell you. A Saskatchewan screamer that brought about 120 kilometer hour wind gusts to the area. Sustained winds at about 100 kilometers an hour whiteout conditions. I've been stranded on the highway with probably about 10 other people on 21 south of Etonia for three and a half hours. Uh, help will be coming. We were promised that. We have, they'll be getting their loaders going here as soon as the weather clears a little bit and they can get out to all of us stranded motorists and get us on our way and then I'll be home. I spent five hours in my vehicle being battered by 100 kilometer an hour sustained winds and gusts of around 120 kilometers per hour filming the whole thing as the storm raged on around me. It was an intense and awe-inspiring experience to be in the middle of it. Something similar to what being near a tornado is like. Around 9.30 p.m., almost as fast as the system moved in, the weather suddenly cleared, revealing the impact of the storm I had just ridden out. Vehicles stranded or abandoned around me and huge snow drifts that had piled up around everything. With that, help arrived from a local company, clearing the roads and breaking us free of our icy bonds. Within 15 minutes of the storm passing, I was back home, safe and warm. Just as those of us in the Canadian prairies were hopeful that spring had finally arrived, our third major winter storm setup was forecasted for March 29th, 2021. So it was time to put away my flip-flops and pull out the winter gear again for what I hope is the last winter storm I will have to cover this winter season. Well, spring is finally underway here in the Canadian prairies. We are seeing soaring plus temperatures here in Saskatchewan, which makes us feel like we can finally kick off those winter tires and, well, throw these guys away. <laughs> The howling wind had me up before my 4 a.m. alarm, rechecking forecast models for the day. This day was going to take a lot, and I mean a lot of coffee. With most of my gear and supplies preloaded the night before, I tossed in my camera gear and headed out to the card lock yet again for the day. 
By 4.45 a.m., I was ready to go and popped on to my first live stream of the day. I'm just out here in south of Kindersley, Saskatchewan. It's about 5 a.m. and this winter storm is just starting to move across the border. Today is expected 5 to 10 centimeters of snow. Wind gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour in some places. Whiteout conditions could exist. I will check back in with you guys as the day goes on. Snow was falling at a steady rate with winds of 50 kilometers an hour gusting to 70 by 6 a.m. It didn't take long for visibility to reduce to less than a kilometer. And by 7 a.m., winds stepped it up to 84 kilometers an hour, gusting to 96. It was clear nobody was going anywhere that morning. With absolute zero visibility, schools recommended students stay home. And road closures had anyone needing to travel for work that day, staying home. The 85 kilometer an hour sustained winds and gusts reaching upwards of 120 kilometers an hour lasted for six hours straight. Most times I couldn't even see much farther than my arm's length away. Winds ripped through, causing damage to buildings, property, trees. Large signs were toppled at businesses, highway signs snapped at the base, and even grain bins tossed in some areas. Of course, though, I never pass up an opportunity to play in the weather, at least for short periods. It's Saskatchewan! It's never windy here! Around 3 p.m. the snowfall tapered off a bit, finally allowing a view of the area around me. Just over a three-foot snowbank that had built up during this storm, I saw someone else I didn't even see the whole time that rode out these crazy winds and snow with me. Around 4 p.m. I ventured home before darkness fell to a semi-warm house. The huge wind gusts caused major problems with our power, knocking it out before 9 a.m. By this time, SAS Power had received 9,000 outage reports. With highways closed in much of the province, it took time before crews could get out to repair the lines and restore power to communities. The community of Laporte, 10 minutes away from me, was without power for 30 hours, causing houses to dip dangerously close to the freezing point with no heat. In the wake of the storm, the province was left digging out yet again. <laughs> 